Hi, I'm Bob Hanlon, here to talk to you today about the element lithium. Over the past 10 to 20 years, this element has been in the news because of its use to, in the new battery technologies that are powering the electric cars and mobile devices. Apparently, the abundance of lithium on Earth is sufficient to meet our needs, although the recovery and production processes struggle sometimes to meet the supply-demand balance that we need. But I'm not here to talk to you about any of that. I'm instead here to talk to you about lithium in the universe and specifically why the amount of lithium in the universe is below that of many of the other elements. To do this, we need to go back some 14 billion years to the Big Bang. To the best of our knowledge, the Big Bang occurred and after about the first three minutes of the Big Bang, the entire mass of the universe was contained in hydrogen and helium, helium-4 specifically. Hydrogen with one proton, about 75% of the mass, and helium-4, two protons, two neutrons with about 25% of the math. I'm not gonna go into the details of why it ended up that way, but I encourage you to read these two great books on the topic. Steven Weinberg's aptly named The First Three Minutes. And then Alan Goose, great detective novel of a book called The Inflationary Universe. Now, after the Big Bang, the universe expanded at tremendous rates and pulled the, the hydrogen and helium-4 along with it. And all the while that that was happening, though, gravity was trying to pull it all back together. And after about 100, 100 to 300 million years, somewhere in there, the early stars started to form from the hydrogen and helium. And it was inside these early stars that the periodic table started to form. And this is what I want to focus on now. It wasn't during the Big Bang that the periodic table formed that was inside these stars. So there were two main processes that drove this formation of the periodic table in the stars. The first was hydrogen burning, in which hydrogen was converted to a helium-4. The other process was helium burning, in which helium-4 reacted with itself to form heavier elements. The first such element being beryllium, as shown here, four protons and four neutrons. But there was one significant problem with beryllium. Let me see if I can do this. It was unstable. <laughs> this, the reaction, as shown here, couldn't really happen. So what happened? So scientists discovered that there was a way for that reaction to happen, and it was this. What happened was is that, as shown here, if the helium-4 in the red there was able to intercept the beryllium before it went unstable and, and destroyed itself, then carbon-12 could be produced. And while the rate was small over time, that ended up becoming the main pathway to generate the heavier elements. Once that process started, it was like the dam broke, and you started to get some kind of a helium-4 polymerization process. The helium-4 kept on adding to itself, as you can see here, to beryllium-8, carbon-12, oxygen-16, and the neon-20. And you can see evidence of how that all happened here in this figure, and you can get this from the internet. Just type in abundance of elements in the universe, and you can see the, the shape uh, and features of this curve reflecting the chemistry that I showed you. Specifically, you can see the up and down pattern in that curve, and you can see the peak production of the of the oxygen, I'm sorry, of the carbon, oxygen, neon, and so on due to the sequential addition of helium-4 to each one of those atoms. And you can also see the downward slope of that curve there, to, which is entirely consistent with the chemistry I just showed. Well, now given this, let's return to our original discussion. If you'll note here, you see these elements down here way below the rest of the elements. And these elements here are lithium, beryllium, and boron. They're not part of the main process. They're, they're very much lower than the main process, and the reason is this. The main reactions that I showed you did not lead to production of these elements. These elements were not stable inside the stars and so could not exist inside the stars. So uh, scientists believe that these elements formed instead for process that, processes that occurred outside the stars uh, on the edge of the stars, a spallation process, when the stars exploded, the elements inside the stars would shatter and lead to smaller fragments, and that's where they think at least one of the processes to give these smaller fragments here. And so that is the reason why lithium is occurring at so such a low abundance in the universe, and that's what I wanted to share with you today about lithium. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.